the Gospel according to Luke. Now, on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, are you, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, what things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth who was a prophet mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and beside all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb, tomb early this morning, and when, the, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they indeed had seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of hearts to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered around. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Christ. So we are now for us three weeks, the third week of Easter, but for our disciples in our story today, they are still back at the third day. The Revised Common Lectionary kind of does this to us in, in this season of Easter, is we start with the resurrection and then we jump all the way to um, the, uh, the, the appearance to the disciples and Thomas in the locked room. And then we jump back to this. And these two disciples who are walking along the road, or as it's commonly known, the road to Emmaus. And I think it's important that we take a moment and orient ourselves to Luke's gospel before we really start to kind of dive into this, this story. Um, first of all, this, is, this comes in Luke's uh, narrative right after the women find the empty tomb and the angels, that's the vision that they talk about in the story. The angels say he's not here. 
And so the women go and they tell the, the other disciples and, and they go and they look and they see the empty tomb, but none of them have seen Jesus at this point. There's been no, no appearance of actually Jesus. And I think that's important for us to remember because in our narrative, because we spent that time in John last week with the appearance to the disciples in the locked room, we can get to thinking like, well, what, what's wrong with these two? Jesus has already shown up, but in Luke's gospel, he hasn't yet. And, you know, I, I don't know if this, it, it might be because this story happens in between those times. Um, the gospel writers have their own kind of reason for how they tell the story of the way Jesus uh, appeared to uh, the, the believers, to the disciples, to the 12 or the 11. And so I think we need to keep that in mind as we think about this story and try to, try to stay true to what Luke is talking about. So Jesus hasn't appeared to anyone yet at this point in Luke. The other thing about Luke is, and, um, you know, I've kind of tried reading through the, and, and I, I sort of see this, and I, I'm not 100% with it, but it's, it's, pretty, it's a pretty good um, description of how Jesus is in Luke, is that Jesus is either on his way to a meal, at a meal, or just leaving a meal. Luke spends a lot of time with Jesus eating with people. Um, he spends a lot of time with Jesus on his way to eating with people or just getting done eating with people. And so it it's, makes sense that this first appearance of Jesus would come on a trip. These two disciples on their way to Emmaus. Why are they on their way there? Who knows? Maybe they're, they're thinking instead of sheltering in Jerusalem in a locked room with the 11, they're thinking, you know what? We need to get out of town. We need to get uh, seven miles away. We're going to hang out over here and we'll be away from kind of the epicenter of all that's happening. And that way, we'll just kind of wait it out and see what happens with the story that we've heard from the women and from the 11. So these two are walking along this road. They're scared. They're grieving. They're wondering what's next. They don't know if any of these stories that they've heard have been true. And then they're walking along and Jesus shows up. And verse 16 is really interesting. Verse 16 says, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. In the Greek, that verb is in what's called a middle voice. And in the middle voice, the subject of the verb is acting on itself. So when you kind of read through that in English, you think, well, why don't they recognize Jesus? Is he somehow different after the resurrection? Is, is he wearing a disguise? One commentator said, is he wearing a, a, a a pair of glasses with a funny nose. I mean, what is Jesus, what is it about Jesus that makes it so they can't recognize him? But if you look at the Greek, there's at least a suggestion that it isn't about what Jesus looks like. It's about something inside those two disciples. Their eyes were kept from recognizing him. Their grief, their worry, their wondering, was keeping them maybe from recognizing Jesus standing right next to them there. And then Jesus doesn't help anything in this story. I mean, he, he goes to them and, and he says, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? And so then they, they tell the story. They tell the, tell the story about Jesus. And Jesus' reaction to them is to talk about himself in the third person. I mean, I, I, I would, if Jesus wanted them to recognize them, 
you know, after they, they tell the story of, of Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, and that he was crucified, and then, and now on this third day, we hear this story about his tomb is empty, and, and there's claims of visions of angels. Instead of Jesus saying, I told you all of that, how did you not recognize it? He talks about himself in the third person. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and enter into his glory? So now we have these disciples, these two disciples who are walking along this road, who are somehow kept from recognizing him because of their grief, maybe because of their, their worry and all of that. And then Jesus adds to it by pretending he's just like, you know, well, maybe he's one of those disciples. Because remember, there's the 12, the inner circle, and they're usually called the 12. And then there's the disciples, of which there are hundreds of people who would follow around Jesus. So it's quite possible these two who are going to Emmaus are outside of the 12. And they could just think, oh, this is just a guy that, you know, he's somebody that's in this throng of people that have been crowding around Jesus, listening to his teachings. And so he's going to try to explain it to us. And, you know, he's talking to the third person. They still just still can't recognize him. But Jesus explains to them the whole thing. Starts with Moses, starts with the prophets, interprets all those things to them. And then they come to this, and this is another point, though, that I really wonder about these two disciples that are on the road, not recognizing who Jesus is. So in, in this time period, you wouldn't travel alone. That's a death sentence, right? You're going to you're end up being someone who's really vulnerable to thieves and to people who are going to try to jump you around the next corner. So you'd always, you, you travel in packs for protection. And as they come near the village, Timaeus, Jesus keeps on walking. Now, anyone in their right mind would not go on by themselves. Jesus would because, well, you know, he's the son of God. But they still don't recognize him, but they do the right thing. They do the right thing and they offer him hospitality. Like, hey, what, stay with us. It's almost evening. It's, it, it's not safe to dra- travel by yourself. It's not safe to go by yourself at night, especially. So come and stay with us. Be with us. They may not recognize Jesus at that point, but they recognize a fellow traveler. They recognize a fellow person who maybe gets it a little bit better than they do, but still somebody who needs to be in the community. And so they invite him in and they sit down at the table. Now they're supposed to be the hosts, right? They are the ones who invited the stranger to come into their midst. And then it happens. They sit down at the table and Jesus turns the table on its head. No longer are these two disciples in the midst of their grief, in the midst of their questions, in their midst of their confusion. They give hospitality to the stranger who says, I'm the host. And Jesus takes the bread and he breaks it and he gives it to him. And then they see it. Then they remember that night five days ago when he did the same thing, when he had turned the tables on being the host and became the servant. And now he's the guest who turns the table and becomes the host. And then they recognize him. And then they recognize what they had just experienced. They look back and they say, were not our hearts burning within us when we were on the road and he was opening those scriptures to us? Didn't we feel that presence? Didn't, didn't we feel how that was, we just felt that, that 
we had always felt when we saw him teach, when he would teach in the synagogues and in the temple, and we would listen to him, and even, even those who were against him would say, he doesn't teach like, like our normal teachers. He teaches with one with authority. Didn't we, didn't we feel that authority when we were going? But we couldn't see it right there when we were in the midst of that walking and that, that struggling. But now... Now that we've come out on the other side, we can see that whole trip. He was with us the entire way. Now that we're at the end and we can look back with our perfect hindsight, we can see every moment where Jesus had walked with us in our struggle, in our confusion, and in our grief. I think it's important. That's the important lesson that I see in the midst of this story of Emmaus. It it shows the truth that Jesus walks with us every step of the way on the journey. Jesus is there teaching us. Jesus is there talking with us, reminding us of the promises that he gave us. His presence is there with us. Our hearts are burning within us, but whatever it is that we're going through, we can't quite see it yet. It's not until we get to the end when we find ourselves at the the end of that suffering, that confusion, that questioning, that then we can turn around and look back. And I think that's helpful for us as, as we walk together as the family of God and all being in different places on that road to Emmaus, that road to recognizing the presence of Jesus is to give each other some grace, is to understand that there may be something that is keeping ourselves or maybe someone else who is is in our community from seeing the presence of Jesus in their life but it's just to let them walk through it. Maybe you've heard of the, the programs called, they're, they're often called Road to Emmaus. Uh, Via de Cristo is one that I've done. I've been a spiritual director for. And I'll never forget Father Stephen, who was one of the other spiritual directors of the one weekend that I did for Via de Cristo, and we were getting together, and, and most of that program is lay people speaking about their experiences around their Christian walk. And, um, you know, I, I, I don't want to, part of that program is that you experience that for yourself. So if you've never done it, I don't want to, I don't want to give any spoilers. But one of the things that, that I noticed is that this is a really uh, deeply spiritual and moving time. And often, even the presenters would be overcome. Even as we were rehearsing, people were rehearsing their, their talks and, and we were giving them feedback. But even in the midst of sharing their story, they would often break down into tears. And it was really interesting because all the other Christians in the room, and these are really strong Christians, as soon as someone would start, the tears would start. As soon as the, the overwhelming emotions would start, everybody in the room just wanted to get up and, and, and hug them and, 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 and come in and, and take the pain away. And after about two or three of these, Father Stephen um, someone, they were overcome with emotion during their presentation, and people started to get up, and Father Stephen just, stop! Everybody stop. Sit down. Let them cry. And he turned to me, and he goes, why is it, as Christians, we just can't let people cry? What is it that we just can't let people walk on their road to Emmaus? Yes, be there. Yes, recognize and see Jesus in the midst of it, but let them walk. Let Jesus teach them. Be a support for them. Let them get to the village themselves to see the breaking of the bread. 
And maybe the answer to, to Father Stephen's question, as I answer it for myself, is because sometimes I'm even kept from recognizing where Jesus is in the midst of that painful moment or that painful journey. And I want to take the pain away because I can't see Jesus there either. So as we think about this first moment where Jesus appears to disciples in Luke, we're all on a road to Emmaus at some level in our life for some reason at any given time, whether it's today, whether it was 10 years ago, whether it's five years from now, we will find ourselves on a road confused and lost, grieving, maybe even crying. Know that Jesus is there and know that you probably won't recognize it until you get to the end. Until whatever moment that is, whatever destination you get to, in that moment there will be something, the breaking of the bread the breaking of the the moment that Jesus will break through at some moment. And our role as disciples, as it was for those disciples on the road to Emmaus, is to walk. Is to walk one step at a time. To To allow each other to be able to be taught by Jesus so that each one of us will come to the village, invite Jesus to our table, and at that moment, he will reveal himself to us, and that we will be able to see where our hearts were burning within us, and that Jesus has cared for us every step of the way.